Today's message is, as we begin the, the, the Christmas season, uh, uh, I've entitled it, uh, Tis the Season for What? Tis the Season for What? Now, I don't know if you, you, you realize it, if you've ever kind of looked at, at Scripture and kind of uh, kind of just noticed as, as God's Word that we have in the Gospels, uh, the Gospel uh, tells two Christmas stories, all right, in a way. Well, it, it's actually, it, it's one Christmas story, of course, but it's from two, sp- two perspectives. Uh, we, we have Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, that, uh, that kind of tells us uh, uh, the perspective of Joseph. So I kind of call that, that, that that's, uh, that, that's, that's the, the man's perspective, all right? Uh, as far as Joseph, you know, uh, uh, there, the husband of Mary, uh, father of Jesus, if you will. In, in, in Matthew's gospel, uh, uh, an angel appears to Joseph. Uh, uh, we uh, also have the, uh, the, the, the magi or the wise men. And, uh, you know, when, when we see, when we see the, the, the nativity and, uh, and when we see uh, the Christmas presentations that, you know, the wise men and the, the shepherds, they're all together. Right, but they were they were they, they were they were uh, different settings. You know, we have Matthew's setting. We also have the Luke's setting. Now, Ma- Matthew was you know one of the disciples that Jesus uh, eventually called. Luke was a physician, and and Luke's Luke's gospel gives us the perspective of of Mary. So the kind of the woman's perspective. All right, how many we we know it uh, when 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 you know as far as men and women, there's just different viewpoints, different ways of looking at things. And so when we look at the details uh, of uh, uh, these two Gospels, and uh, again, it's the same, uh, the same story, the, the, the birth of Christ. Uh, for Mary, uh, the, the, it's the angel Gabriel that appears uh, to do, was Gabriel the one that appeared uh, to Joseph? We don't know that because he was un, unnamed in the Matthew account. But we have the angel Gabriel. We also we learn a little bit about Elizabeth, uh, one of Mary's relatives, and, and Zechariah, and of course the shepherds are in that uh, that par- that that uh, gospel account that we have. But again, there's just so much that we 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 already we, we have we have the Christmas perspective in our minds, and you know through the years it's been you know molded in in such a way again d- depending on just your perspective, and, and maybe what means to you. So for some people, uh, there's, a, there's a special song that means more uh, to them than maybe somebody else. And, and may, may, maybe uh, with each Christmas, there's something uh, that, that enhances your perspective of Christmas. Well, today, I, wanna, I want us to address what is our, perspe- for our perspective of Christmas. Tis the season for what? Again, for each person, I mean, what is Christmas the season for? Of course, you know, the song says, tis, the, uh, tis uh, uh, the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la, la 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 la. You know, uh, I mean, uh, again, maybe you don't like that song. Maybe that's a song that you like, you know. Uh, but, but uh, again, it may, may, maybe your perspective is, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, my, my, my wife, she gets into the Christmas season, and uh, uh, we're, we're watching a Hallmark movie every night. And, and I, I've, I've sat down, I've watched uh, uh, these movies, you know, and uh, I, I, I kind of make fun of the plot sometimes. And she says, you don't have to watch it if you don't want to, you know. Uh, uh, but again, the perspective of how, how maybe somebody uh, gets into that Christmas season. And uh, uh, for some, it's going out to get that Christmas tree and uh, the traditions that are there, but your perspective of Christmas. Well, uh, again, I want us to answer the question, tis the season for what? We're kicking off the Christmas season this, this, this week. We have communion this morning. We're going to have our, our, our family Christmas dinner uh, tonight. If you've ever been uh, to that, I encourage you, you know, do something different. Come out and, and, and join us. It, it's very informal, uh, uh, just a, 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 just a, a, a nice you know, simple evening. But whatever your traditions may be, whatever, uh, I, I want to I challenge you to uh, just gain a, a, a deeper perspective of Christmas this year. Again, you don't have time, you don't have to say, well, I, yeah, I'll get to that, because you won't get to it. 
you know, before you know it, we're going to be uh, here again next week, and another week has gone by, and, and things are going to just uh, go by so quickly here. And, and there's just so much uh, to do. But I, I, want us to, I want us to gain that, that true perspective of Christmas. I want to start right now and, and just challenge you uh, over these next three weeks to uh, just every day to find that true perspective of Christmas. You know, you, you, you often hear, we'll, we'll talk, we're we'll praying, and, and throughout the year, uh, you, someone will quote the, the verse that says, uh, for with God, nothing will be impossible. You know, or, or we'll say, uh, with God, all things are possible. We, it, it's one of those things that uh, in, in church, we, uh, we, we, we say, you know, without thinking. And we encourage one another and say, oh, well, you know, God, nothing's impossible with God. You know, trust the Lord. Everything's everything's possible. But do we do we understand that 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 verse that verse comes from the 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 the, the, the Christmas story, if you will? That verse comes from Luke uh, from Luke's gospel in, in Luke chapter one and verse thirty seven. And so today we're going to look at Luke's gospel perspective, Mary's perspective of what took place in her life and what took place in the world. When Jesus came. So I'm going to ask you to turn with me to your, in your Bibles to Luke chapter 1. And again, next week I'm going to be looking at the Matthew account. And we're going to look at that perspective and, and, and gain some truths about uh, that perspective of Christmas. But today we're going to look at Luke chapter 1. So turn with me, Luke chapter 1, we get, beginning at verse 26. I'm going to ask you to stand with me if you will, please. Stand with me. I'm going to throw a curve at you. You know I'm always kind of a NIV person. All right, and, and uh, we always have the end. Well, I, I wanted to use the New King James Version uh, for this passage, and so uh, uh, it'll be up on the screen. So again, I don't want to mess you up, you know, and get you. I don't want to lose you before we even get started because I'm using a different uh, paraphrase. All right, so just understand this is the New King James Version from Luke chapter 1, uh, beginning at verse 26. It goes like this. Now in the sixth month of, uh, what, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But, what she, but when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid, ser the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And God, I pray, Lord, that uh, th this day, Lord, as we uh, gather here in your house, Lord, I pray, God, that we would get a revelation of your perspective, of what you want to do, not what you did uh, uh, years ago with this first Christmas but, but, Lord, what you want to do in this Christmas, this year, what you want to do in our lives. And so, Lord, I, I pray, God, that we would gain your perspective on what this season is. Lord, anoint each heart, Lord. Prepare our hearts, Lord, with, with your word and prepare us for communion to follow. And we ask this in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What, what the, tis the, the season for what? What's this Christmas going to be for you? Is it going to be another Christmas? 
Uh, is, it, is it already a, uh, maybe even a time that you're kind of not looking forward to? You're, you're already maybe agonizing over things, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, Christmas gifts and, and, and uh, uh, you know, Christmas parties and, and, and getting your family together and uh, getting uh, uh, your in-laws together. That's always a pleasant time, you know, that we look forward, uh, forward to, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it just, your calendar is probably already filled up. And then you've already said, you know, well, you know, Pastor, you, you have a dinner tonight. You know, I got things to do. You know, and and, and they're, you, you know, and the church is adding to your busy schedule and and so forth. But you know, what 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 what's your outlook already, as far as this Christmas, you know, and 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 and, and what 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 is your expectation? Well, my my prayer here is is uh, is that may this Christmas first of all be may this Christmas be the season. For the impossible possibility. All right, that, that, that verse 37 there, all right, in Luke chapter 1, the angel says, For with God, nothing will be impossible. Uh, you know, he's, he's explained to Mary uh, the, how this is going to take place uh, that, that uh, uh, the Son of God is, is going to be born uh, through her. And, and he, he, always, he kind of even cites the example that her relative, Elizabeth, uh, uh, much older and uh, considered barren, uh, was, uh, uh, was pregnant with a child, and that would be John the Baptist. The John the Baptist who would lead the way for, uh, for, for Jesus and his ministry. And, and so we, uh, you know, he, he's saying, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And I want you to start, start to have this idea that this Christmas, that this Christmas is going to be a season for the impossible possibility. In your life, in the lives of others, the season for the impossible possibility. Because uh, with God, nothing will be impossible. Nothing will be impossible. Do, we, do you understand that that, that verse 37 there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a twin verse that goes along with that verse. You know, that, uh, it, it, you know, they're not identical twins, all right? But there's a twin verse that goes along with Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Verse 37, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Well, later on, now we go to, to the Gospel of Matthew, but later on, as Jesus is ministering and as he is teaching, Jesus uh, quotes uh, this same truth uh, but a little bit in a different uh, in a different way. Uh, it was a, there was a, there was a question that was asked. Well, you know, because Jesus kind of explained that uh, you know that he had he had just kind of tried to connect with a, a rich young ruler and and, and kind of told him the you know what he needed to do. You know, and the uh, the rich young ruler basically turned his back on Jesus and and walked away. And he said he couldn't do that. He he, he couldn't give his life. He couldn't give his all. Uh, for Jesus, and he and he and he walked away, and and didn't experience the joy of Christ in his life, and and, and Jesus uh, makes a comment that uh, it's easier for a, a camel to pass through the eye of a needle, which that's a you know that's just absurd, all right, you know, a big old camel, you know, and, and a little eye of a needle. I mean, I I, I can't even thread a needle, let alone. Uh, you know, think about a camel passing through the eye of a needle. But Jesus was saying it's, it's easier for that to take place than for uh, a, a rich man to get in heaven. And the disciples, they, they heard this and they're like, well, then, you know, how, how, can, uh, how, how, can, how can someone be saved? How can someone enter in to heaven? And again, it's, it, the idea there, there's the implication that it's impossible. And it is, it's impossible. And, and Jesus made the comment, he said, with man, this is impossible. By, by ourselves, we cannot get into heaven. It is impossible. He said, but with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. And so here we have these verses linked uh, for, with, with Jesus' birth and, and then with the idea of salvation for, uh, for individuals, for uh, each person, that, uh, that there, there's a the link here that it's, it's impossible in the eyes of man, but with God, all things are possible. All things are possible, and so I want us to get. I want us to understand that that it, with, in, in the eyes of man, this is just another season, another Christmas. Oh, it's a feel good holiday, and and, and uh, you know we're gonna enjoy it, and and that, that's it. 
But we need to understand with God's perspective that all things are possible. And he wants this season and he wants this coming year for you to be a season of the impossible possibilities. The impossible possibilities. And then secondly, I, 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 want, I, I want you to have this perspective. I want, I want you to have this idea that this Christmas, may this Christmas be a very miraculous Christmas. A very miraculous Christmas. Now you may, may, maybe you haven't officially had your first Merry Christmas, you know, where you say Merry Christmas to somebody. Or, of course, you know, we're supposed to just say Happy Holidays, you know. But, but, but you know, we go up and we, we say, you know, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, you know. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. At least have your back. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and, you know, we don't even think about it. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Can we have this perspective? That this would be a very miraculous Christmas. Huh? A very miraculous I, I'll tell you what. If you went up to somebody, have a very miraculous Christmas. <laughs> they'd be like, what? <laughs> huh? And probably the first couple of times you'll stumble over that because that's a few more syllables. You know, if you're like me, you know, my tongue gets tied and I'll be there, blah, 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 Christmas. Uh. But, you know, if, if we would have that perspective as, as believers to encourage people, I, I hope you have a very miraculous Christmas. I bet you you'll get them looking, your, looking you in the eye and say, what did you just say? What did you just say? And, 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 and to, to say that this is going to be a miraculous Christmas because this is going to be a season of the impossible possibility. You know, God is a God of miracles. And, and, and we, uh, we, we need to have that perspective, not just at Christmas time, but throughout the year, that, that this is a season for what? It's a season for miracles. It's a season for uh, the miraculous power of God in our lives. All right, let me get into something else more personal now. How many have that wish list, all right, that Christmas list, all right? I know, don't raise your hand because I don't want to embarrass you. But we have, we have that, 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 that Christmas list, that wish list. I, I, I'm going to, I'm not, you know, I'm not putting myself out. I, I, I don't have a wish list, all right? My wife is always, you, you got you to tell us what you want. You gotta, you gotta, you know, and really, I, I don't, I don't want to put a, a list together because, number one, you know, I wouldn't know where to put the stuff. I'm at that place. Uh, I'm at that place where I'm trying to get rid of stuff. You know, and and and, and so you know, I you know, I, I've even said, you know, don't you, you shouldn't spend more than you know, you know, ten bucks on me. Right? <laughs> you know, really. Uh, it, 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 my my wife. I mean, she is awesome. She she years ago she made these Christmas stockings that are. I mean, they're the Jolly Green Giant stockings. All right. And, and and she fills them up for for me for the kids everything. I mean it's just it's a stocking that I mean it it's just you know so much stuff in it. I mean she just and all year long she is you know just getting these little things for each one of us and 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 I'll be honest right she's not here but you know when I when I empty my stocking I'm like what am I gonna do with this? I mean there's stuff that she gets that I don't even know how to use it. You know, and, 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 and so, but I mean, we, we, we all have that wish list, all right? And, you know, I, I've learned something this year already, you know, this technology that we live in. And, you know, you go on, uh, online or, how, how, you know, and you can have, uh, you know, your, 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 your loved ones, they have their list. And, and, and you know what can happen when, when somebody gets something on your list? It's checked off. You can already know if you got something. Huh? Now, talk about checking your list twice. Yeah, I know what you're all are doing, all right? You're, che you're checking, well, did, did one of my items get off my list? You know, and we, 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 have, this, we have this Christmas wish list, you know, that, uh, again, you know, and, and some of you, you know, it's a long list. Boy, you guys have been busy. Got a long list there. Here's a question I want to just pose you. And, again, no condemnation. No condemnation. You know, Christmas is about giving and, and, and blessing one another. So please, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not coming against giving gifts. And, and, and so, you know, don't, don't go away, you know, feeling, oh, Pastor Dan really just burst my bubble, you know. And, but here, here's a question I just want you to think about. Again, to just gain a perspective. To just gain the proper perspective. Here's the question. If God answered 
And somebody shared this quote with me uh, a few weeks ago, and I've been holding on to it. And I'm going to, you know, kind of apply it here. But if God answered all your prayers, would any lives be changed other than your own? All right, and so here, if you, re, if you get everything, if God gives you everything on your wish list, would any other lives be changed other than your own? And again, I just want you, I just want you to get, a, you know, the proper perspective here. I'm not, you know, I, I hope you get everything that you want. I hope, I hope, you know, Christmas morning, I mean, you just, you know, you get, every, you get everything that, 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 you, that you need there. But just, you know, the perspective. Get things in perspective. That proper perspective is, is what, what you receive. Is it just enhance your life, change your life, or can it change others? Can it change others? You know, uh, you know there, there's an there, 11-year-old boy. His name is Jackson, Jackson, Jackson Somber of Covington, Louisiana. We just got done with Operation Christmas Child a little over a week ago. Jackson celebrated his 11th birthday this year. And this year, for Operation Christmas Child, he packed and his family, and, and his goal, his goal was 1,111 shoeboxes. And he accomplished that goal. And this past year, and the last few years as he's been doing this, the previous year uh, they, they did about 500 uh, gift boxes. But again, it's what he, it's what he wants to do. For, throughout the year, for his birthday, for anything special, for Christmas, he didn't want anything. He wanted uh, he, he wanted people to, uh, to just give him stuff that he could put into the shoe boxes and, and to pack shoe boxes. Uh, you know, uh, he, he didn't want any gifts. This is 11 year old. 11 year old. You can, uh, you know, you can Google it, you know, uh, and, and uh, uh, you'll, you'll see what's there. Again, his, his desire, uh, they did an interview of him on the news, and he, his, his desire, and he's been doing this since he was four years old, that he can remember his family. He, his, his desire was that the children that would receive those boxes, that they would know that somebody loves them and that God loves them. I mean, I, I, what a perspective. That, that's, a, that's a miraculous perspective. That, 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 that's a perspective that, uh, that God wants to do the miraculous. That, that's a, you know, because again, we, say, we think 1,111 uh, boxes, and you're right away, you say, that's impossible. That's impossible. I mean, you, me, I, I'm one that I, I overanalyze things. I'm thinking, okay, man, 1,111, 365 days in the year. You know, how, how many, how many, you know, how, he, yeah, he didn't do it all in one night. But this was, his, this was his perspective all year long, that for his 11th birthday, that this is what he wanted to, this is what he wanted to do for the Lord. This is, again, the perspective that's there. You know, we need to understand, we need, sometimes we need to change our perspectives and, and, and understand that God wants to do the miraculous, to do the miraculous, to touch others with the, uh, the, 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 the miraculous power of the Lord. Well, from, from Mary's experience here, Mary's example, I want, to show, I, want, I want you to see two, two, two lessons from Mary's experience and example here, all right? And, and, and again, this is, you know, I'm, I'm being very frank here with these lessons, again, you know, don't, don't, don't get upset. I'm just trying to nudge you a little bit to change your perspective. Here, here's what we can learn from, from Mary, uh, from her perspective here. Christmas is not about you. Christmas is not about you, but God wants to involve you. All right? And so we need, that's our, we need our perspective. All right? Uh, that, 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 you know, Christmas isn't, isn't about me. You know, but, but, God, but God wants to involve me in what he wants to do what, in, in, in doing the miraculous. And so, that, that, I mean, that's what we should get excited. You know, I'm, I'm not trying, and again, I'm not trying to beat you down and say, hey, Christmas is not about you. The, this is not about, you know, you know, be, you know selfish or not. But, but God wants to involve you in his plan. God wants to involve you in, in, in his miraculous power. And, and, and these next three weeks, that's, the, again, the season for the impossible possibility. And God wants to involve you in that. 
He wants to involve you. Secondly, Christmas is about Jesus and what he is about to do. That's what Mary, the, 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 that's what, that's what Mary came to understand, uh, that it wasn't about her, but that, that God wanted to involve her in, 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 in coming down and, and, and beca- taking on that, that bodily form because his plan, his plan was ultimately to die on the cross. And that's why I like that song, Mary, Did You Know? Mary, did you know? And I got, I got to believe that Mary, Mary, when we see how she reacted, uh, she, she had that perspective of the impossible possibility. That perspective of, uh, of, of the, the miraculous power of God. Could, could consider Mary's responses here now. When, 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 when she's first told, uh, when, when the angel Gabriel first tells her, you know, this is, good, this is what's going to happen. Uh, you know, that, 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 uh, uh, that she, w- she was going to conceive in her womb and bring forth a son. And he sh- she'll call his name Jesus. And he will be great. He'll be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And what, what, was, what was Mary's response here? What did she say? She said, how can this be? How can this be? Now that, that, that was the proper response, because she didn't say she, she didn't say, well, why me? You know, uh, I mean, again, immediately she she had to be thinking, no, I because you know she she didn't know a man, she was a virgin, and, and so she immediately probably had to be thinking, you know, this uh, you know people are gonna you know they're gonna say you know, bad things about me. They're going to say uh, things about me that uh, just, you know, aren't true. And so she didn't say, why me? You know, what, what about me? What's, what's that going to do for me? What's that going to put, what kind of place is that going to put me in? No, she said, how can this be? And we need to understand, to me, that, 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 that question how, that question how indicates that, you know, the, the, the truth of the possibility. The, the, uh, the, the idea that, hey, you know, with God, all things are possible. That, 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 that this, that, you know, uh, this is what God wants to do. Uh, and so uh, it, was, it, it was the idea that Mary became intrigued. She was intrigued by this. And, and that's what I'm trying to, uh, uh, my, my desire here is to, to intrigue you into the possibilities, the, the impossible possibilities to intrigue you into the uh, perspective of, uh, of, of the miraculous power of God, you know, and, and to, uh, to, to get yourself asking the question, how can this be, how, how, how could God use me? You know, and, and that th- this is the idea that God wants to involve you. He wants to involve you in something miraculous this year. And it's not, not a miracle for you, but maybe a miracle for somebody else. You know, to understand, again, the, the, this whole truth that, uh, you know, with God, nothing will be impossible. And, and, and when Jesus said that, uh, you know, salvation, uh, you know, for individuals with man, it's impossible. But with God, salvation is possible. We need to understand, when we talk about the miracles, it's the miracle of salvation. It's the miracle of somebody experiencing Jesus in their life. That's what, that's what the angel basically was telling Mary, that, that Jesus was going to be conceived in her. And, and, and again, where she was physically going to give birth to, to Christ. That's also what happens in each person when they have the opportunity to experience Christ in their life. They're, they're inviting him in to their life, and, and, and he enters them, and it's, 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 a, it's a miraculous transformation. They're a new creation. That's the miracle. You know, yeah, yeah, there's, there, there, there's, there's, there's miracles of healing. There, there, there's miracles of provision. There, there, there's all kind of miracles out there, miracles where uh, time stands still, and, uh, mir- you know, God can do anything, but the one, the miracle, what, what all those miracles 
uh, contribute to is the miracle of someone believing in Jesus Christ and accepting God's gift of grace and mercy. That's the miracle. That's the miracle. And that's, that's what God wants to involve you in. He, he, he wants to involve you in, in that uh, of, of Jesus being birthed in somebody and given new life. And so we need to be intrigued by that. Mary, Mary was intrigued by that. And then secondly, uh, what was her second response? Then, then, then you know, when, when, uh, when, when the, you know, the angel explains to her that it will be the Holy Spirit that will come upon you, uh, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. That, that, that Greek word for overshadow is the same Hebrew word uh, that we find in the Old Testament when, when God's presence dwelled in the tabernacle that was there with the Israelites as they, as they uh, traveled the wilderness. And then when God's presence entered the temple, that was, that was again, God's presence. And, and, and the, the, the angel said, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and overshadow you. The God, God's presence would overshadow you. And so Mary's response is, let it be to me. Let it be to me. And, and here we, you know, this is, Mary was inspired here. She was intrigued first, and when she, when she heard what the angel had to say, uh, she uh, was inspired uh, to say, let it be to me. And it, it's that inspiration to surrender. That's what I say, what do you mean? You know, we're supposed to be inspired to win. We're supposed to be inspired to victory. No, to be inspired to surrender to God and say, let it be to me. Let it be to me, to surrender and to be a servant for God. And so she said yes to God. She said yes to the impossible. Uh, she uh, said yes to the impossible possibility. She said yes to God's plan and purpose, was, which was not for her, but for all mankind, that a Savior would be born. And he was going to be born through Mary. He would be born through Mary. And so it's that, you know, when we say, let it be to me, it, it's not for our own, but it's for others. It's for others. That's what it's about. I want you to gain that perspective. I want you to gain it. So here's the, the final question here. I already asked you the question. If God answered all your prayers, uh, would any lives be changed other than your own? This question says, what is the difference from how can this be to let it be to me? What's the difference? The difference is the same difference from the absence of God to the presence of God. The, pre, the, 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 the you know, that God is either with you or he's not. Now, you know, let, let's, let, let, let's, let's, what about this possibility? What about this possibility? What if Mary had said, nah, there's no way. You know, Mary had the option. God, God wasn't forcing himself uh, uh, upon, upon Mary. Mary had the option. She could have said, no. No. My life is starting to really, you know, jo Joseph uh, is, is uh, you know, uh, willing to marry me. And, and again, Mary, she was just a teenager. And she could have said, no. But we under need to understand that's the difference between the absence of God, the presence of God in our lives or not. 